lines are all, I mean, specifics to, to, to MATLAB. Uh, I need to define the symbolic variables. MATLAB has its symbolic tools as some other software. Then the rotation matrices in symbolic. And then what is important is that, uh, I mean, the forward kinematics is simply given by this one. So this is the propagation of velocities. Simplify is a command that is specific to symbolic computation, so we can ignore. But the forward kinematics is very easy because the, the angular velocity of each link is given by the previous one plus the contribution of uh, the corresponding joint. Only seven lines to implement the forward kinematics of the angular velocities. Then additional I mean, specific uh, commands to handle the symbolic variables, but let us focus on the angular acceleration. The angular acceleration is also very nice because, for example, line here 97, I have that the angular acceleration given by the angular acceleration coming fr from the previous link plus the contribution of the um, joint acceleration of the corresponding joint plus now this is the angular acceleration of the uh, linked fixed frame and there is also the contribution of the, the, the cross vector of q dot one uh, cross vector omega the previous one okay very easy seven lines. For the acceleration is the same. This is just the implementation of the acceleration. Okay? Then uh, I, all, I have all those variables symbolically in my in my workspace and I implement the backward recursion and again, the backward recursion, I need some uh, specific commands for handling symbolic variables, but this is what I need in order to compute tau 7. It's very easy. I need to compute the equilibrium of forces, Newton equation, the equilibrium of moments, Euler equation and projection of the moment along the proper z. Okay. Some rotations, some indexes, but conceptually what I've done is forward propagation of uh, angular velocity, angular acceleration and linear acceleration, backward propagation of equilibrium of forces and moments. This is what I've done. Then there is a lot of code around to properly define the variables and I need to know that F7, for example, is expressed in link 7. All, all the stuff needs to be properly commented. But this is very, very easy. When I have uh, tau 7, tau 7 is a huge symbolic variable. Okay? From that, I want to extract the coefficient of the regressor. And this is done in... Uh, this is done uh, in MATLAB or in any other software that allow you to implement uh, uh, symbolic computation, you can extract the coefficient of a specific term. Now I extract the, the coefficient of M1 from tau1, okay? And this is uh, the position 1,1 one, one of the regressor. And I do it for all the, the terms. In the end, as I told you, if I put my mouse here, y reduced is, is the regressor, okay? Don't ignore the, the, the reduced term, but, and I right click, 
uh, <laughs> my math club ants. That's it. Because it's because uh, it's huge and now this is the expression and of course and uh, uh, this is a problem with uh, I think with the linear version sometimes you have uh, some lines superimposed but this is my regressor okay this is my regressor uh, I bet you in finding any bugs or mistakes here okay it's, it's impossible okay and you have to to find resorting to some other you have to write code to find in order to find to find bugs in other code and if you if you make a mistake of course in the in the code that you write a bad bug that's a uh, endless loop in finding in finding bugs okay <coughs> now we can compute the manipulability ellipsoid also here in the, in the dynamics. And the concept uh, is very interesting too. <laughs> Do you remember the kinematic manipulability ellipsoid, the velocity manipulability ellipsoid? what they were for. They did represent a mapping from the joint velocities to the end effector velocities. And we discovered that this mapping is uh, by means of the Jacobian. In particular, we discovered that if we take uh, a sphere in the joint velocity space, a sphere that collects all the point with the same norm, uh, velocity norm, so one, in the end effector, we do have uh, an ellipse. And this ellipse is driven, let me say, by the Jacobian. The information about the eccentricity of the, the, the um, semi-axis are embedded in the Jacobian. So it means that the Jacobian embeds a very important information. How my robot transform the joint velocity into the end effector velocity. Okay, let us try to do the same with forces. If I write tau transpose tau equal one, I hope you, we all remember that this is a sphere because we already recall it a couple of times. Tau transpose tau is a scalar. Tau transpose is a 1 by n, tau is n by 1. It means that here I have tau 1 squared plus tau 2 squared plus until tau n squared equal 1. In a two dimension is a, the equation of a, a circumference. In three dimension is the sphere. Okay, so this is a sphere. Let us consider the robot still not in contact with the environment. Still not in contact with the environment means okay, velocity is zero and the interaction force is zero. My model is represented by those terms mass by acceleration plus gravity is equal force. So now we have mass by acceleration. In the kinematic, uh, my mapping was an effector velocity equal Jacobian multiplied by Q dot. 
Now, I have that tau is the quantity that I'm interested to. Q d dot, but here I want the other factor of acceleration, and I should do something here. But I have something more, the gravity. Okay, it will uh, represent uh, a new aspect. Okay. I want here to bring the end effect of acceleration. And uh, I know that uh, V is equal to JQ dot. If I make the time derivative uh, of the left and right hand side, I have V dot is equal to J dot Q dot plus J Q D dot. But I'm making the assumption that my robot is still the Q dot is equal to zero. Okay? Okay. Let us make the assumption that uh, uh, this is, okay, a redundant robot, but uh, far from any kinematic singularities, it means that I can left multiply by the pseudo inverse of J. Now, this means that here this is my my equation of motion when my robot is still instantaneously this is the image ok let us put the equation here quantity, I just substitute this quantity here. Here I have the same of course. Okay? Okay, but this is not very clear. I'm looking for a, a geometric representation of something in V dot. This is not clear. Okay, I don't I don't read any geometric equations here. So let us make some uh, computations. Those computations are easy. You can, you can do it by exercise, but what is important is that in the end, I can rewrite this, one, this equation as uh, a very nice, okay, this one can be, can be written uh, as uh, Can be written as the last this can be written in this way and then if I multiply I, I, I need to make the transpose of this one and multiply well the transpose of this one means that this vector here is transposed it goes on the left and here I have, uh, you know, the core of a quadratic expression, transpose, of course. In the end, uh, when I have something like, I'm just copying the last one in order to, to work on it. Apparently complex, but it's something that we already 
We already saw. It's more or less simple. Let me... <coughs> this is a positive definite matrix. Because basically, if you look, this is the same matrix multiplied by its transpose. And uh, in, a, in the matrix uh, uh, mathematics, it means the square of a number. So the properties are similar. This is a positive definite matrix. And now let me just write that this is uh, a vector x. We already saw this guy here. If this is a vector x, this is an, ellip an ellipse. But in v dot, this is a translation of the ridge. Okay. So something very nice is coming out from from this con those considerations. First of all, mass matrix is coming into the game. And of course, in kinematics, we we didn't have this I mean, concept. We didn't have the mass matrix, but with forces, mass matrix, of course, entering into into the equations. We still have the Jacobian. The Jacobian is a is a crucial tool, is a crucial concept in robotics. And this represents the the, the core part of a. A quadratic expression where we do have another difference with respect to the kinematic one. The gravity is uh, somehow polarizing the acceleration that I can achieve at the end effect. This is not surprising at all. If this is my configuration and I want to see from uh, the joints how do they torques tau transpose tau equal one maps into the end effect or acceleration I clearly benefit from going down than up because I need to counteract the gravity here and I have help of the gravity here and I think that the graphical interpretation, interpretation that I'm going to, to provide you in the next slide really clarify this concept. Planar trilling robot on a vertical plane, okay? So is the plane and the gravity is acting on a vertical plane. Here I have the I mean the position and x y axis axis and this ellipse is the ellipse obtained here okay first uh, uh, considered with respect to the end effector and then translated by this contribution okay so those are only the linear accelerations that can be achieved with uh, the torques with unitary norm. So let us try to, to, to better see this. This is tau transpose tau equal one. Okay? Three links, three joints, and this is a sphere with the origin in the origin of the X. Now, what I want to 
do is to understand the meaning of the dynamic manipulability ellipsoid. If I take a point in the sphere, it means that the physical meaning is that I'm taking three joint torques that has unitary load. Okay? And if I apply this torque to the equation, I discover that I can go, for example, here with a linear acceleration. Okay? Only the linear one. For example. So this point A goes on here. Can you take another point? B. For example, I can go here. Now, the two points in the torque space, they do exhibit the same norm. It means from the energetic aspect, for me, are the same, for me, motors. But here, in the Cartesian space, I have two totally different performances in terms of linear acceleration. Of course, here, I benefit from the gravity this time. Now, if A goes here or in another place, I just drop by chance, but this information is in the quadratic, this information is here. As for any ellipse, okay, we know that the, the, the eigenvector of the matrix, they do uh, embed the information of the direction and then the eigenvalues of the eccentricities. Again, Jacobian and mass matrix, they both work together in order to uh, provide the dynamic manipulability ellipsoid. Okay. So we do have another instrument to understand our robot. Okay. Okay. Uh, if it is not redundant, uh, uh, the equations just you have to change minus one with pseudo inverse, but it's the same. Okay. I'm going to give you only the, the basic idea of the trajectory that I'm scaling now without going into the slides. I just want to give you the idea. Okay. imagine that you design a trapezoidal velocity profile for one link robot, for example, the pendulum, I don't care, okay? And, uh, <coughs> well, if it is a pendulum, the torques, for example, at the steady state, you have to compensate for a uh, for the gravity. Okay, so you have this pendulum, you developed a trapezoidal velocity profile, and uh, you implement it in your robot, and you saturate the torques, for example. Because your velocity was too fast. What can you do? Okay, so decrease the velocity. If you decrease the velocity, you discover that the torques decrease in a quite really strange way. Or for example, if you modify the final time, or if you modify the maximum acceleration, it's not very, it's not e e trivial what is the consequence on the torques. And if you saturate the torques, 
it means that you cannot follow this trajectory, you need to change it. There is no way you can move on and ignore this. Okay. You can slow down on everything until, until the torques are lower than the saturation. You can do it, of course. But if you are in an industrial environment, one of the main requirements is that you always saturate one of the constraints. What does it mean? Uh, you have a mechanical instrument. Your robot is a mechanical stuff that is doing something. Okay? And you have a lot of constraints. You have a maximum joint velocity for each of the joints. You have a maximum joint um, acceleration. You can have also a maximum joint jerk. You can have a maximum linear um, uh, velocity at the end effect. Linear acceleration at the end effect. And you have also maximum torques at the joints, given by the manufacturer of uh, the mechanics of the robot. Okay. Your robot is, uh, of course, in a, in a, in inside a, a manufacturing system. You want to saturate. You don't want it to be the slowest part of the, of the, of the manufacturing process, of course. It means that when you produce uh, a trajectory, you want to be as fast as possible. What does it mean, as fast as possible? It means that you need to take all those constraints uh, and in somehow you should demonstrate to the um, owner, uh, to the, to the uh, I, I, okay, the name is in, even in Italian, to, to the one that is uh, asking you no, to, 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 to implement the, the, the the robot process, you want to demonstrate that you did what was possible with the instruments that you have, the maximum. It means that, for example, you want to, that this one is tau max. This way you go to You present your stuff and you say, okay, I cannot do more than that because I'm saturating the robot. I cannot go faster than that, for example. You cannot do it by chance, by trial and error, because the way the torques is composed, this is, those are the equation of motion, tau is very non-linearly related to velocity and acceleration. So you cannot say, okay, I slow down a little bit and see what's happened. You can spend all your life uh, in, in, uh, in changing the final time, <coughs> the maximum acceleration, or the, sp the speed velocity and see what's going on with the, with the torques. What you can do is to implement some analytical approach in order to scale your trajectory, to slow down your trajectory, or to speed up your trajectory in an analytical way. Okay? What you know is that uh, there is uh, a relationship with acceleration, that is, uh, tau is related to the acceleration by means of something that is configuration dependent. You know that there is a square dependency with the uh, velocities. Okay? Then there is another linear one for friction. And then you know that there is uh, a configuration dependent term that is the gravity. If you study the model, and if you know very well your model, you can implement analytical way to profile your trajectory in order to satisfy all the constraints, okay? And this is uh, the only thing that I'm going to, to tell you about trajectory scaling. We are not going to into the, in the, into the details. But just to give you an idea, several years ago, I think now more, um, 15 years ago, 
Uh, I've been part of uh, a um, working group for Comau exactly to implement this trajectory scan. They wanted something that automatically, given as input a lot of uh, constraints and requirements, was able to um, generate a velocity profile not necessarily trapezoidal, a proper velocity profile, satisfying all the constraints, okay? For example, changing the point in real time and uh, passing to via points, not stopping exactly, and so on. By saturating always some of the constraints. This is what I mean, they, they, they ask it for. So you should know your model in order to generate a trajectory that goes close to the limit of your structure or your, mecha or your mechanical structure, okay? So this is the concept. I'm not going to the details, but this is the concept. I, I should know my, my model in order to design a proper velocity that exploit at its maximum the, the instrument that I have. Okay, so we just skip all this stuff and uh, uh, I will leave uh, the operational space the model just when we will need it when we will study the control in the operational space so we are not going to do it today but we are going to, to see it uh, next lessons questions